one with 23 knockouts. The 147 pound or welterweight division is well stocked with quality champions. Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker, considered by many to be the best pound for pound fighter in the world, continues to rule the WBC. Ike Forte is the current WBA title holder, while one of the hottest commodities in the sport, Felix Trinidad, is the IBF champion. Tonight's battle is for the North American Boxing Federation belt, which features an undefeated champion and a once beaten challenger. The champion, 25 year old Daryl Coley, who has yet to lose in 29 pro bouts. The WBA has him ranked as high as number three. He has never had a world title shot, winning the NABF crown just over a year ago with an exciting 11th round TKO over the gritty Terence Ali. The challenger, 23 year old Ova Carr, has just one loss in 36 fights. He is ranked in the top 10 by all three major world sanctioning bodies. In contrast to Coley, Carr did have a shot at a world title, but lost via eighth round TKO to Trinidad last December, his lone blemish. Many feel that Carr will be back in the world title picture, but to get there again, he must get by Daryl Coley. As we bring in the fight, Dr. Ginferti, is Coley among the division's elite, or if not, can he be? Well, when you put two words together, uh, undefeated and champion, you come out with elite. He does belong in the elite, but that top quality is real top cream. Could he be, if he gets by here and does it well, then he belongs with those other three, and then we're going to see some interesting boxing in this division. And what about the importance of this fight to Obakar's career after losing in his first championship attempt? Bobby, your thoughts on that? Well, Obakar has to get back on track against quality opponents. He's had three easy tune-ups, but what he needs to be is impressive against a fighter who can fight. Daryl Coley can fight. Felix Trinidad exposed Obakar's flaws, took advantage of him. What he needs to do is go back to the drawing board, which he says he has, correct those, and look impressive here tonight to get back in, sh in contention for another world title shot. All right, Bob, and now let us take a look at the challenger in the ring over the Motor City car, the pride of Detroit, Michigan. Car, whose career started out of the express lane, seemed destined for a world title. Then he got sidetracked with serious managerial problems. He leveled off, but now seems to be back on track following his only loss, that title shot against Felix Trinidad, a defeat that came after 32 straight wins. He's 3-0 since all early knockouts. In fact, 22 of his 23 KO victories inside of five rounds. Yes, he can punch. And here is the champion, Daryl Coley, originally from Gary, Indiana, now makes his home in Capitol Heights, Maryland, very rarely fights outside of the Washington, D.C. area. Tonight, his first fight in Las Vegas and the third defense of his NABF welterweight crown. He comes off a third round stoppage of John Jeter this past May 12th. Let's check the numerical breakdown as we go to the tail of the tape. Coley at 25 is two years older than Carr. At 5'11", Coley two inches taller than Carr. Coley tipped the scales at 146. Carr hit the 147 weight limit. And a four-inch reach advantage for Coley. And the rules for this NABF championship fight. Ten-point must system. Three scoring judges. No standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. And a fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. So here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, closing in on our co-feature, the NABF Waterway Championship set for the introductions to the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the world's largest hotel, casino, and theme park, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. As we have a big night of action coming your way, and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions, Corona Beer, and the MGM Grand. At this time, we present the first of our featured attractions. It is sanctioned by the North American Boxing Federation, the President Mario La Traverse, Supervisor Arlen Spider Bynum, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman Dr. James Nave. Our judges scoring this bout from ringside, Dickie Cole. Dwayne Ford and Chuck Jumpa. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Kenny uh, Bayless. All right, fans, here we go with the NABF Welterweight Championship scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. I present to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing black trunks and hailing from the Motor City of Detroit, Michigan. 
He weighed in at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds. His outstanding record includes 35 wins, only one defeat, with 23 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked number six, seven, and eight, respectively, by the IBF, WBC, and the WBA. Please welcome the NABF number two contender, introducing Oba, the Motor City Car. His opponent across the ring is the defending champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing red, white, and blue trunks and joining us from Capitol Heights, Maryland. He weighed in at a ready 146 pounds. His fine record includes 27 wins, no losses, two draws with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making the third defense of his title. Please welcome the undefeated NABF welterweight champion, Daryl Too Sweet Coley. Once again, here's our referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Kenny Bayless. Stay between them. Okay, listen, fellas. We you know the rules in the dressing room. I'm going to caution you to my commands at all times. I want no wrestling. I want it clean at all times. Are there any questions in the red corner? Any questions in the blue corner? Any questions? Touch gloves. Good luck to both of Final instructions from the referee, Kenny Bayless. Interesting to note that prior to the ring walk, Oba Carr was praying with Mike Tyson. Tyson and Carr, very close friends. Meanwhile, Daryl Coley, soft spoken. He's the champion boxer puncher. He does have power. He's a boxer first, but he can bang. We are ready to go. Scheduled for 12, the NABF Welterweight Championship. Steve Albert with the fight doctor, Freddy Pacheco, and Bobby Chez. Oba Carr, excellent boxer. Oba wearing the black trunks. Quick jab, good puncher. The strength is in his right hand. He relies on speed for those fast uppercuts. Very slick, sharp, accurate little hooks. Keep an eye on that. He loves to throw short, crisp hooks to the body. He has good timing with his punches and usually throws punches in bunches. Steve, this fight looks to be a serious, serious chess match. Oba Clark came out early, tried to do a little bit of the intimidating factor, nose to nose, staring him down. Foley would have none of it, but right now it's going to be a big time boxing match. He's struck with a little difference in size in that Coley is taller than Oba Clark. Oba Clark not, not apparently bothered by this chasing him, but that is the chess match that Bobby refers to. Coley refusing to commit early. In our meeting with Carr yesterday, he seemed very low key, very pensive. He's usually a lot more up. Uh, and the day before he gets into the ring, he uh, was tremendously humbled by that loss to uh, Felix Trinidad. He is 3 0 since. Coley told us yesterday the only reason he took this fight was to get to Felix Trinidad. Well, that may be a mistake to look past Obercar to get to Trinidad. And, uh, Obercar is a big, major obstacle, and if he gets by him, he's lucky tonight. Well, what Coley said was, too, he thought Obercar was a better fighter than Trinidad, more difficult for him to beat than Trinidad, which I found to be a little shock. Yeah, he said uh, he felt that Carr is a hotter fight than, uh, than Trinidad, which really raised our eyebrows, because Carr, he feels, is more skillful. He's trickier. Trinidad may be stronger, but he'll do the same thing 20 times. But he also feels he's just better than Carr, saying that Oba is one-dimensional, that after the left hook, he has nothing. We shall see. Only content with this circle. He uses footwork, superior footwork, but he's getting nothing with it. He's, <laughs> that's good, but if you're in track meet. Good left hook there by Coley that got in. See, Coley's got to use his speed to generate power. It's the speed of the bullet that kills him, not the size of it. And what Coley does is look to be quick. Doesn't want to knock him out. He even said, I want to beat him every round, shut him out, and demoralize him, and prove I'm better. He said he'd rather have a shutout than a knockout, which is very difficult to attain in Las Vegas. I can't swallow that. And it's almost impossible to happen anywhere, even if you're related to all three judges. <laughs> Coley, good boxing skills, good speed, as you just saw, tremendous heart. His power is growing. What? 
and a nice right hand. Got away. Good defensive moves by Cole. Bobby, this guy can box. Yeah, he's a great boxer. He's got terrific speed, good reflexes, and he's got just he's got a good feel for the ring. He knows when he's got to move. His defining fight was a victory over the seasoned veteran Terence Ali for the NABF title last July, 11th round TKO. Now let me tell you something. We can't afford to get in the, in the, in the, in the, in the backside, okay? You huh? got to step up and start shooting a straight right hand to the body, okay? Mm -hmm. You gave that round away. You didn't throw no body shots, right. okay? Right. Right. The man is using the ring. Or you got too much room. You got to go to the fight. You got to get up in the mix of this shit, okay? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Now that's what we practice on, brother. You can't stay out there and wait. You waiting to counter punch. You can't counter. Just don't go one. You hit, him, you hit with the right hand a couple times, but come back with the, with the, with the left hook or the right uppercut underneath, okay? Looking good, baby. Looking good. When he pops his jab, you can step to your right slightly and just drop the right hand. Come back underneath with the left hand. Not involved with the crowd. Quick you, shot. You hit him with. Okay, baby. Looking good so far. Looking don't, good. don't get into the crowd. All right. Interested observer, close friend of Obakar, a fellow by the name of Mike Tyson, who will be fighting Peter McNeely. A week from tonight here in this very ring. McNeely is here as well, and we will be talking to Hurricane Peter a little bit later. And we hope to get Iron Mike as well. Round two is scheduled for 12 for the NABF Waterweight Championship. Overcar came out throwing two big overhand rights. They didn't connect, but he's looking to close the gap, close the distance down between the fighters and minimize the effectiveness of the jab of Cole. Bobby, both, both corners said the same thing to him. You guys didn't do anything out there. You lost the round. Come back and, and get active. Get on this guy. So it's interesting to think to see that both guys thought they lost the round. It was, it was a very uneventful round. I gave it to Cole just because he landed a couple of more punches, but it and, was very uneventful. And box beautiful. Obakar with a left hook that connects. Oba's throwing very hard punches, and he, this guy's a very hard target to punch if you're just going to sit down and try to throw bombs. It's, it's hard to hit a guy. That, you read my mind. I was just going to say the same thing because you'll get tired doing that missing. You know, <laughs> for every action is an equal and opposite reaction. You'll get tired doing that. Coley, very elusive, good defensive fighter. Carr got his boxing degree at the Cronk Gym in Detroit. Well, let's step back to you. He told us uh, that Coley has never been to this level. That's why he plans to win this fight. It's like when I fought Trinidad, he said, I had never been to that level. We may be on the same level in terms of skills, but not mentally. He says whoever has the mental edge in the early going of this fight will win. Meanwhile, it's kind of uh, Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> They're uh, the Motor City guy. You know, he was trained from the very beginning by Emmanuel Stewart for a long time. And you can see Emmanuel Stewart's training on, on him and his technique on him. I think he's missing Emmanuel Stewart, to tell you the truth. He got a great foundation from working earlier in his career at the front gym with uh, Stewart. He fights with a lot of zeal. There's a left hook that just missed, but a straight right by Coley that lands. Coley's a terrific counterpunch. He's got good speed. He rolls and rocks with the punches. He blocks nice. The hooks are hitting his gloves, and he's tearing back. Daryl Coley opening up. I think a right hand sort of stunned Obercar. He just blinked and held on for a moment. That was a good, fierce exchange inside, but you can see how cool Coley is. Whoa! And here's Cody digging to the body with uppercuts. And I'll tell you what, Carr's in trouble. His legs are not under him right now. He's, he's fighting, he's just fighting back to sit, stave off an attack because he's not doing the smart thing. Cody looking to end it right here. Both fighters throwing bombs toe to toe right in the center of the ring. Obakar coming back, but not with the same intensity, not with the same strength. His legs still aren't under him too good. First a flurry by Cody, then Carr attempting to come back. And that shot to the Stomach to the midsection had Coley going backwards. Coley looks hurt. I'm looking at his eyes and his legs. He looks like there's something wrong. He's rubbery. Yeah. Darryl Coley. He wasn't the one that took the beating, and he looks like he's hurt. And there's the bell. Listen to me. Listen to me good, okay? Now you're fighting the right fight. Read deep, okay? This mother you won the round. That's why I want you to fight. Keep stepping with the jab. This motherfucker don't want to fight. Look, I don't want you to launch with no left hook no more, okay? Because you're missing, you got hit. Don't launch with that shot. Keep stepping, putting that right hand to the body. Breathe deep, relax. Dude, not too much water, not too much water. Not too much water. Over. Watch the load, Over. okay? Over. Keep the pressure on and start it going down. That's a great sequence by Coley. 
as Obakar slips, goes to the rope, gets gone by a right hand. That was legal, by the way, and from there on out, it was a shellacking. Somehow, Obakar withstood it. I think he blew the round on account of that, but at the end of the round, it was Carr, I mean, Coley who looked a little confused, a little bewildered. So here we go into round three. And Carr comes out, punches. See, one of the problems when you've got to chase a bigger man who's got that kind of speed is you run into shots sometimes, get timed on the way in. And the car has to be careful of it. He doesn't run into any right hands or counter left hooks. I'll say this about Cooley. He sure is patient. Cooley, 27 0 2 with 19 knockouts. He's 25 years old, defending this title for the third time. Trying to use this as a stepping stone to a world title attempt. Obakar, who lost in his only world title attempt to Felix Trinidad recently, looking to get another shot at a world title. See, the call to be effective. He's got to use that jab, and he's got to counter Obakar's jab. He's got to throw. He's got to make him pay when he misses. That's the only way he's going to do it, be effective. Otherwise, Obakar's going to what we call slow walk him down. And he did just that as you were talking. He hit him three good jabs, moved to the side, hit him another good jab. He is patient. Coley in box. And Coley just missing with that zinging right past the ear of Carr. That straight left connecting by Coley. Good punch by Coley. He's hurting Obakar with the jabs as Coley. Coley's jabs are hard. And as we came into the fight, the odds makers had a slight favorite uh, for Obakar. But if you were to talk to the two fighters in the dressing room, Coley was so confident you would have thought he was a huge favorite. And Carr landing with that right hand. A straight right hand loaded up with it. There's another straight right right down the middle. Pulls it up with a combination. Best punches of the fight for Obakar. Three good winging shots from inside. And he finished it off with a right uppercut. Look out, look out, look out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Not behind the hill. Not behind the those rabbit punches, says Kenny Bayless to Daryl Coney, the champion. And Carr on the attack. Carr has really picked up steam here in round three. Carr looks like he's using his strength to bully Coley around the range. Right now it's working. And he's cutting that distance, that all-important distance between them. He's getting in there, but he's paying a price with that stiff jab, Bobby. He's paying that price. Look at that. Being a shorter fighter, I know how it is for you. Sometimes we have to eat a couple to give a few. Right now, the bigger puncher appears to be over Carr, so he's going to take some of those jabs to get some body shots and overhand rights in. Ooh. Right hand by Coley, but back comes Carr. Keep him up, Keep him Great up, shot by Carson. Uh, that right hand landed beautifully and caused uh, Overcard to misfire on two shots that followed. So, good point getter for Coley. But he's really on. Coley shows lots of movement, very loose and fluid. Often shows lots of looks. He goes backwards. He can switch to a left hand stance as well. Again, that right hand lead. He just seems to time and outspeed Obakar and outthink Obakar up to this point. It's a nice left hook, partially blocked, but I'll tell you what, some of that got through. And round three concludes. Coming up next, our main event is we take you backstage here at the MGM Grand into the dressing room of Vincent Petway on the verge of his second defense of the IBF junior middleweight crown, 76 year old Mac. Uh, Lewis behind him there. He is the Dean of Baltimore uh, Boxing. He has been with Vincent Petway for 20 years, his first champion. And Mr. Petway returns to the scene of his victory over Gianfranco Rossi last year when he won the championship. And in his first defense against Simon Brown in a great fight, he may have administered the knockout of the year. A thunderous left hook to Brown's chin. Brown went down and out throwing punches while he was laying flat on his back. Petway versus number one rated Paul Vaden coming up next. Here at the MGM Grand in Las Check Vegas, Nevada, one week before the big Mike Tyson return. A little warm up action for you here. This is our first of two championship fights. This is for the NABF. Welterweight Championship. Daryl Coley in the multicolored, the red, white, and blue trunks, and Obakar, the challenger, in the all black. Round four. I'm sure round three gave Obakar some confidence. He's starting to get home with the right hand a little better, closing the gap a little more effective. He's 
still hasn't got the answer, though, Bobby. It's, this guy's still too fast. He's got to do some more work to the stomach. He's, he's got to get that body down a little bit so this guy's not bouncing around. Coley looks like he's got the uh, energy to go the whole 12. Bar boxing more now, poking through with the jab. Maywa dancing around is Coley. Watch the head, watch the head, fellas. Coley idolizes fellow Maryland resident Sugar Ray Leonard. They both won the title in their 24th fight. Coley uh, works out at Leonard's gym in Maryland. In fact, today, the 16th anniversary of uh, Leonard winning this title, the NABF Waterway title over Pete Ranzetti. Well, if he were to fill some shoes of Sugar Ray Leonard, it, it is a tall, tall, <laughs> very tall. Interesting here, we have the oh, oh, good right hand by Daryl Coley. Coley looks oh, to follow it up with an overhand right. We have correlation from Detroit with Carr and Hearns and Coley with Leonard. Come on, work out of here. Short uppercut, digging to the chin of Daryl Coley is over Carr. Carr grateful to be inside somewhere where he can land some leather because he's not having a great deal of success from out here, and he's eating leather. And Carr on the chase. The elusive Daryl Coley. Trying to avoid over Carr's punches. He avoided that one, came back with a countering, clubbing right, but that missed. This is the type of fight where both fighters have such good speed and reflexes that you see four or five punches miss in a row for each fighter. Not exactly a heavyweight pace. A lot of punches being thrown here over the first three plus rounds. Now, there are a lot of different styles of boxing. There's a lot of us that like to see good boxing. And we're looking at it here. Ooh, nice, strong, hammering shot by Obercar right to the body. That's what he's got to do to And Kenny Bale is saying, watch the heads. They don't want any head butts here. They're coming together quite a lot here. That is so dangerous. Overcar starting to get some of those body shots home now. Big right hand. They both missed with huge right hands. Yeah, just. It's going to be interesting to see if some of those big punches over Overcar land, what's going to happen, because he's throwing some very hard leather. I don't think I've ever seen Overcar load up like this in any of his fights. Okay, hold up, hold up. He looks very purposeful, and he looks like he's got bad intentions on 90% of his shots. This is almost earlier Overcar when he was loading up. Then he went to more boxing, more combinations, more jabbing. Now he's going back to the old Overcar. Excellent, excellent. Body attack, excellent by Overcar. And there's your bell for round four. Combinations, baby. Combinations, baby. Combinations, baby. He's nothing. Slow down, slow down. You get him so slow confused. Down. He throw enough hooks. He's all balanced. Remember, you, you count him. You, you count him enough hook with the right hand and bring something underneath. No right uppercuts. We work with the right uppercuts, Daryl. You have no uppercuts there. Come on, he trying he's to jumping over just right to let the right hand go underneath. He's come back he's immediately. He's doing exactly what he's saying. A double hook. He's going here and trying to go here. What do you remember about that, okay? Come on. Don't sit there for that when he, when he does it. He's trying to be tired. Let's take a look at Coley's wonderful action here. You see, he, when he throws a punch and he misses, he's always back out of it. He doesn't, he doesn't stay there for a, a card. And you see later in the round, Obacar doing what he's supposed to. He's pressing, starting to land those shots side of the head. He's missing a few, but he's working the body, he's digging inside, and he's closing the gap. He's making Coley fight back. I think that's the first round I gave to Obacar. His body attack was real hard. He's cutting the distance, and he's starting to intimidate a little bit. I, I, and he is purposeful. He, you can see him surging. Carr's trainer, Stacy McKinley, said that Coley's a runner. He fights one minute per round. He's not busy. He's going to have to fight against Oba. And uh, so far, he is uh, a prophet. Right. He's, he saw that on the table. Oh, look at the way. Carr was going to the back. That's a hard warning. You're going too low. Hard the warning. low Let's blow go. warning from Kenny Bellis to Oba Carr. That's a hard warning, he said to Carr. That's exactly what he said, which means he means business. He means that's a solid. It's in the bank. Another one of those, and you got problems. Round five. All oh, the back here, fellas. Kenny Bayless, who ref that Santana Norris two fight, the controversial fight, where Norris nailed Santana after the bell. Santana was again being carried out on the stretcher as the winner. And they'll rematch for the third time next Saturday. Pumping left hooks by Oba Carr to the head of Coley. He's doing, ooh, he was doing much better. Look, look how he fires off with what confidence now. I'll tell you too, Coley keeps his right hand up. He is very leery of that left hook. He knows it's coming. He knows that's his weapon, Obercar's best weapon. His right hand is next to his ear. 
Well, Overcar is getting back in this fight and it's surging in his, the tide is beginning to turn here because he's cut the distance and he has really become the hotter. Coley's chin is questionable. He has been down before, as has Carr. Carr was down against Livingstone Bramble in a tremendous fight. Carr came back to win it in uh, a 12 round decision. Good exchange here. Wild match by Coley and a digging right uppercut to the ribs by Carr. Obercar's making a beautiful move. He's letting that right hand fly by him and he's turning, rocking, and taking his momentum back into Coley, trying to time him back with his right hand. A beautiful, a beautiful move by Obercar. Carr really picking up confidence. A minute to go in round five. Oh, 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 holding and hitting there by Carr, and now Kenny Bayless breaks it. I think he's probably gotten a lot out of the pep talk. He got Tyson went back there and was talking to him. There's a slip. Tyson's pep talk was give it all you got. You got nothing to lose. Oh. Overhand right by Overcar. That's Coley it. An overhand right by Coley. Coley come back with two overhand rights and here's oh. another one. Coley just missed with that right. They are just winging. They are missing with some very big shots. And it's, all, and it's truly caution to the wind because neither one of them are having any defense after they shoot. They're just shooting. Wild, frantic action again in the center of the ring. I'll tell you, there's a couple of nice body shots for the first time by Daryl Cole. Good countering right uppercut by Carr after that Coley miss. Coley throwing a lot of wild punches and opening himself up, particularly his stomach. It was a tough, tough round to score because they were both at going at each other. We just got doused by a whole lot of water. I want to see jams and right hands and left hooks, man. You throw it, you try to throw You're locking your right hand right here. We work with a gym. Right here from here. Not from here, Daryl. Are you listening to me? You're coming too damn Drop wide. Right here. He's, he's wide open for the right hand. If you cock it back here, he, he sees it. You're trying to throw hard from here. You don't have to throw hard from here. Twist with him. It's right there, babe. Look. Put the pressure on him and stay boxing, man. Let's take a look at that low blow warning. It was pretty evident, and I think that the referee could do nothing but that. You know, but it wasn't that bad. <laughs> there was a little more around toward the. We have seen some toward, worse. Oh, yeah, a little more around toward the hip. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't. I didn't, didn't get too excited about that one. Later on in the round, you'll see that the back and forth, the ebb and flow of this fight. They start. Coley starts fighting inside, but they're both landing right hands, turning, slipping right hands. A lot of good action. Leonard Langley with some emphatic words in the face of Daryl Coley as we begin round six for the NAB at Waterweight Championship. Daryl Coley in the red, white, and blue. He is the champion. His third defense, Oba Carr in the black. Great action in that last round. They stopped circling the ring and really threw punches in that previous round. Carr with the left hook and Coley with the overhand rights. It's as if Coley said, all right, you want to fight? I'm going to show you what kind of fighter I am for a few minutes before I run again. And he, he really laid it out. I mean, excellent, excellent action between the two. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to move that quickly, changing gears, switching directions. A lot of good, hard, solid endurance on your legs. But I'll tell you what, I don't know what's going on here, but I'll tell you what, he can't do that all day without fighting. There's some tape well, hanging from the left hand of Daryl Coley. That's what Stacy said in, in, the, in the interview, the, the corner man. He only fights one minute. The rest of the time, he's running. You got to catch him that one minute. And of course, that's what we've seen so far. But that last round was a determination on Coley's part to show he too can fight toe to toe. Nothing wrong with his heart. Well, Carr usually capitalizes on his opponent's mistakes. He makes them make mistakes and then makes them pay for it. He truly is a thinking man fighter. I hate, to, I hate to think ahead, but somewhere down the road, I would love to see him fight Trinidad. What a fight that would be, these two tall guys. Gerald Coley, as he told us, taking this fight to get to Trinidad. The rounds are close, too. Not too many of the rounds have a big margin one way or the other. It's going to be very interesting to see how the scoring is at the end of this fight. And again, there's a knockout. Again, depending on judges, some love to see this kind of defensive movement. Other people love to see the attack go. So this is going to be a very, very interesting scoring. Now, just for a fleeting moment, things settling down as they both regroup. The action has been frenetic up to this point. We're in round six. Carr doing the pursuing. 
This goes back to an old phrase that's used but not understood very much, ring generalship. That means you pick your, your spots, you go when you want to, and you get away when you don't. And that's what uh, Coley has been doing with great success. Stacy McKinley, Carr's trainer, really yelling from the corner. Nice body shots by Oba Carr. And that was a low. That was a low one. He said, next time I'm going to deduct a point. That was a low one, Bobby. On both sides. That's his second warning. Oh, it's the back clean. There you go. Kenny Bayless taking charge. Oh, nice. Digging short, crisp left uppercut to the head by Oba Carr. Partially shielded by the glove of Coley. Now Coley going downstairs. Overhand right just missed by Coley. That one, a glancing blow. See, Obakar's turning too, which is minimizing the effect. When he gets hit with that right hand, he's turning on it, shifting his jaw so he's not taking that punch flush. Now Carr coming back with digging left, doubling up with the left, but missing. But he's taking the body shots flush, Bobby. This guy starts with a body shot and then comes with that big right hand. He's not landing the big right hand, but boy, he's landing the body. Also in attendance, as mentioned, there he is, the man who will be Mike Tyson's first opponent in over four years, Peter McNeely, scoping out the ring, playing to the crowd. He sees himself up on the uh, big screen. McNeely, a third-generation fighter whose father fought Floyd Patterson for the World Heavyweight title in 1961. His grandfather, remember the 1928 Olympic team, although an injury uh, held him out. There's the man he'll be going up against next Saturday night, Mike Tyson. Many are saying the only thing in question for next Saturday, how long will it take for Tyson to take out McNeely? Just for the record, his fastest knockout, 30 seconds against Marvis Frazier in 1986. Peter McNeely has other ideas. He has, in fact, predicted that he will knock out Mike Tyson. We shall see. We're getting set for round seven, halfway through the scheduled distance. Let's check the unofficial scoring, Ferdy. I've got uh, Daryl Coley ahead, 59 to 56, but I just love this kind of uh, guy's boxing. You know, I have this 3-2-1 and one actually for Carr. I think Carr closed the gap by one round even. First two rounds I gave to Coley. After that, I gave two to Carr, one even, and I thought Carr edged him in the last, so we obviously see it a little different. Yeah, we both got a draw round, which neither one of us like to do, but that oh, was a draw oh, round. The action has been terrific throughout most of this fight. Watch your hands. Coley with a right hand. What a shot by Daryl Coley and Carr showing the good chance. Beautiful combination, a double left hook under and over and a right hand follow was pretty. It was vintage Coley, that's how he boxes, but no effects, no ill effects on Obakar. Obakar standing right in there and taking it. Yeah, he took a lot of shots. It was more than those three because he came back with more, and they're winging Come shots. On, they're not oh, like oh, easy clean, punches. On, they're good combinations by Coley. But, uh, you know, Carr always dangerous after that. That has to dismay on, the champion, Daryl Coley, perhaps saying to himself, I just gave him my best shot. Come on, come on, and not come much on, happened. He didn't even flinch. Come on, work out, and the work power out, has been growing on, for uh, Daryl Coley, who won the title over Terrence on, Ali last July in a fantastic fight. Two fights later, a disappointing draw with Rocky Balboa, who was a last-minute replacement. A couple of good punches there by both fighters. Coley getting the better of that confrontation, though. Until the draw with Balboa, Coley had won six straight fights by knockout, but he does not consider himself a knockout puncher. Boxer first, but he also shows that he can bang. Coley was doing surprisingly well on the inside. They were leaning up against each other, what we call feeling each other and reacting. Guy gets tense, you know he's going to move, and they turn the punches in. Work Great counter-punching by both come fighters. On, come on, work out of there. Work out, fellas. Come on, work out of there. Kenny Bayless lets him go. Says, work out of there. Coley just trying to line up that overhand right. Clean, clean, fellas. Work out, work out. Nice shots by Overcar. Little short, choppy. Oh, it's a good short, choppy right. A heavy overhand right by Overcar. It was a crisp shot. Coley's oh, starting to work a nice left hook to the body. Very subtle, work, but he's digging it in. It's, it's hard, bro. Look at this end fighting. Both unleashing. Short 
first punches. Downstairs and up, but Carr missing. Good head movement by Coley to avoid those punches. Two low blow by Carr. Two low blows, and the referee was on the other side. And Carr finishes with a nice overhand right. That landed. Well, also on that big card a week from tonight, making his first title defense and on hand tonight, the Atlantic City Express, Bruce Selden. Right here, he'll be fighting Southpaw Joe Hip. Selden comes off the impressive seventh round TKO over Tony Tucker for the vacant title this past April. And this is a man who thought his career was completely over when he suffered a first round knockout against Riddick Bowe in 1991, but he turned his career and his life around. Next Saturday night on the undercard of Tyson McNeely, he'll take on the boss, Joe Hill. You see here, Daryl Coley early in the round, he's staying on the inside, double left hook, triple left hook, and then the right hand, and once again, good reflexes gets out of the way. Good combination for Daryl Coley. The best thing I like, Bobby, is he doesn't hang around and get hit. I mean, he, he, he unloads and then he moves out. That's why I think his, his boxing is such a polished ring generalship we're showing, we're seeing. So with the WBA heavyweight champ, Bruce Selden and other boxing luminaries looking on, we enter round eight, scheduled for 12 for the NABF Welterweight Championship. Daryl Coley, the champion of the red, white, and blue, and Oba Carr in the black trunks, the challenger. Good combination by Daryl Coley. But a glancing blow with the work out, work out, work right out hand. Of that, fellas. Once again, Clark tried to roll and counter with the right hand, but neither of the punches that uh, either of the fighters threw was real effective. And they are both loading up now here in round eight. Looking to end this thing on one punch. Oh, it's this endless body attack of Coley's with the left to the body. I mean, oh, nice shots by Overcross. Stop Coley in his tracks. Most of his career, Carr's had that label of future world champion. Now, it's about getting to that point where it's time to shed that label and really get down to business. Nice combinations here by Coley. He seems to have Overcar, not, not, not a little hurt, a little weak. He's clean and clean on the inside. They're deceiving shots. Beautiful right uppercut by Daryl Coley. That snap, Carr's Watch head back. Hands, and quick. He has such great hand speed. Daryl Coley. Work out, work out. And you see Coley's taking the round off of dancing. And that happens with dancers. That happened with Ali all the time. People thought he danced all the time. He didn't. He'd come down and just whittle away around or two so he could rest. And he's doing that now. Coley covering up, protecting him, himself from those digging uppercuts to the body. And Coley landing with these rights and lefts. Look at Coley. Coley's doing something very cute on the inside. He's blocking the punches. He's watching Carr. He's unloading, blocking Carr shots and encountering and finishing every single confrontation. Carr just got in, though, with one of those short right uppercuts. Coley told us, you take away that little up, uppercut to the body, and, and Carr has nothing else. But I think Coley's finding out what Carr has. Let me tell you, he is raining punches on Carr now. Yes. Here's another one, a left hook. This is a very pivotal round for Daryl Coley in this fight. And for Carr, if, he can, if Carr can withstand all this, I mean, he's getting hammered. Oh, punishing blows to the ribs with the left hand by Daryl Coley. Here's a left hook quickly done. Oh, Coley continues this assault. Those hooks to the head, Bobby, they just come in and they okay. land flush. I mean, over Carr's got some kind of jaw. And they just continue to stand and what a barrage by Coley. Now, Coley's right now, he's beating him to the punch. He's quicker and he's more accurate and he's throwing more punches. Now, Carr comes right back. Big right hand. Sir, he's taking a lot of it load. Was, it was right on the board. That's where I saw it, okay? okay. okay. All right. That's good. Round nine, Joe. Keep it moving, girl. I told you how you fight. Why are you? Girl, you box him. You box this dude. Come on. Got nothing for us. All right, here is one of those things that happens in boxing. Car taking a mammoth shellacking. All of a sudden, he comes back. Watch the little right hand that does the trick. Now watch this little bang. There it is. And you see him waver right there? 
he is major trouble. Had that happened in the middle of the ring, Bobby, this fight could have been over. It wasn't enough to win the round, but he, boy, he sure improved it. Exactly. How do you score a round where the guy beats you to half to death, and then right at the end, you almost get knocked out? And now Ubacar comes oh, racing oh, out oh, to begin oh, round oh, nine oh, to pick oh, up where he left off and try to finish Coley on. Coley really getting tagged with five seconds left in the previous round. Whenever a fighter gets hurt right before the end of the round, you, you, you've got to test him. You've got to see if he's still hurt. Back comes Coley, and then back comes Carr. Both throwing wicked combinations. Here's another combination by Coley. And a good counterpunch by Carr. Uh, Carr feels it. He feels it. He says, I can get this guy. All I got to do is push. Oh, look at this tripling up on the left hand by Carr. Again, he's got Coley momentarily dazed. Coley took a step back, looked wobbled. He is wobbled. His, his legs aren't under him anymore. He is definitely wobbled. overcar has got this fight to take right now if he wants it. I'll tell you what, does he have enough energy, though? Now back comes Coley with a combination upstairs to Carr. What a tremendous fight. Well, here's where that beating that he's, Coley's been giving Carr to the body could pay off. Oh! Unbelievable! That hook is just—he just has to throw it. And wide open was Obakar, not protecting himself from Coley's shots. Now back comes Carr with a left uppercut to the jaw, misses with the left hook, just missed with the right overhand, goes to the head, left to right, all over Coley. Coley takes a swing and a miss, and nearly Coley's, went down. Coley's legs are buckling, either from exhaustion or the shots that he got. But boy, did they buckle just then. Midway through the night. I'll tell you right now, the strength is a big factor. Right now, Coley looks a little weaker. He looks like he's not got his legs under him as well as he should, but he's still landing punches. All he's got is his arms because his legs are gone. There's just spaghetti under there. And a long way to go in this round, particularly for Coley. Coley looks like if he gets hit real hard, he can go. About a minute remaining in this ninth round. Time to go for a man that's staggering on his legs like Coley is, looking exhausted. Look and look at him come back, tremendous heart by Daryl Coley. I'll tell you what, it's a pretty crisp combination. He just jumps into a combination, relaxes, and jumps back into another one. And Carr just missing with those straight rights. Carr has to be chasing him. He's not. And a left hook by Coley that tag Carr on the head. Less than 20 seconds remaining of the night. You know, this back and forth, back and forth makes these types of rounds critical to scoring. I tell you, either judge, any of the judges could have it one point either way. Nobody could ever dispute it. None, none whatsoever. Look at this. Look at this. see the weakness that uh, he inflicts on Coley because Coley started all right but then all of a sudden he withered he looked just like a spaghetti there because he's getting hammered by Carr but <laughs> but he you know later in the round you watch here's the combinations Coley coming right back firing two three at one point in time he landed three left hooks then two more then three more all of them clean right on the button and you really got to admire Coley Feverish action of that ninth round. We go to round 10. Coley's left hook scoring. At times he looked shattered, exhausted, but then he'll come back with a flurry of punches. And look at him this time. He's dancing around like he was a ballerina. Showing tremendous recuperative power. Coley's corner told him, use your legs, box. Don't give this man a chance. I think he got too crazy and thought he was going to knock out Overcar. And Overcar's strength started to overpower him. Wow. Back to what got him here. Number 10. Coley dancing around, almost like the very beginning of the fight. You wouldn't know that so much punishment had been administered. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
of a car stalking uh, Daryl Coley, perhaps a prophet. He said that this might be a more difficult fight than Felix Finnegan. I think he's, he could be right, but you never know. Felix Finnegan is just as tall, and he really does that. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that's a different animal. Right now, he's got all he can handle. A local car who just might be winning this fight. Not on my card, but he just might. Be. I have Coley just ever so slightly ahead based on a couple rounds. His counter punching, much more crisp, much more accurate, and more punches was the key. Now, both fighters showing the, the signs, and understandably so, of fatigue. Punches slowing up, a lot of hanging on. And then, just as I say that, Carr unloads with a right. An overhand right that just missed. There's an overhand right that got a piece of Coley's chin. I'll tell you what, the way he threw it, he meant to let this fight in right there. Bad intentions on that one. A la his close friend Mike Tyson, who's sitting off to our left and rooting Carr on. Again, Carr chasing. His manager Rory is sitting over there with uh, his other fighter. Keeps hollering. I told you to tell him to go to the body. You can't get to the body when a guy's dancing like this. Well, right now, Opakar is being more effective. He's landing the cleaner shots. He's pushing Coley back. Coley not being effective in his retreat. You know what it looks like? It looks like Coley's taking the round off. Saying, let me get myself back together. Again, a little boxing, a little punching. And he finishes up strong with that flurry to the body. Less than 30 seconds, 20 now, remaining in round 10. Looks like he wanted a quiet round. He wanted to get himself back together. He was willing to throw this one away. Trying to steal around here from uh, the judges in the final minute coming alive. Trying to impress Wayne Ford, Chuck Giampa, and Dickie Cole. Well, up next, the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. We take you behind the scenes into the dressing room of the challenger. Top rated, undefeated Paul Gaten set to take on Vincent Petway as a nice group shot. The ultimate. Who's gonna be a champion today? Yeah, the ultimate! Who? The ultimate! Who? The ultimate! All right! Yeah, the ultimate! The ultimate is his nickname. A little pep talk there in the uh, dressing room. Vaden told us he's actually using boxing as a vehicle to a singing career. Very uh, sensitive, low-key, nice man. Come you. counter shots. Quick look. Let him make mistakes now. Make mistakes. Let him make mistakes now. When he started falling off hook, miss him. Take it home. Boom, boom. Jay, come on. He's trying to counter with that short right hand. He's trying to throw that right hand short. He last two rounds, you win the fight. You win the fight. Get him good. You know what I say? Not power, just speed. And here we go into the championship rounds, round number 11. It has been a dilly, a very intense affair between the champion Daryl Coley in the red, white, and blue and the challenger Obakar in the all black trunks. This has had such back and forth, ebb and flow sides that. I tell you what, whoever closes strong these last two rounds is probably going to get this decision. That's exactly what the corner told him. Take these last two rounds, you got it. Don't think this is in the bag. It's not. Obakar coming into uncharted territory. First time pass, round number 10. Coley's been there before. In fact, he won the title with an 11th round TKO over Terrence Ali last summer. That left hook scored by... Uh, Daryl Coley. Back, step back. And I'll tell you what, Obercar really whipped his left hook clean. Even though he missed by a mile, he really whipped it in. Here, this is the points that, that Coley's making. He lands and the other guy misses. And that's points in anybody's books. Break! Step back. I'm making difference how hard you throw the punch if you don't land it. So the last two pivotal rounds here in an extremely close fight. Oh, what a right hand on, after the left by Daryl Coley. Combination beautifully done. Coley has been working that double left hook to the body head, followed by right hand, as well as I've seen anyone do it in quite some time. Oh, Minute and a half remaining in round 11. Oh, nice, hard, hard right. punch to the body by Obercar. Not landing flush, though. You know, kind of glancing off. A spiraling left uppercut that just missed by a hair. Now, Coley working the jab, funnels over the right, but a right uppercut. 
close to the midsection by Uber Khan. That's that rock and roll. He rocks on the right hand, rolls back with his own. A sledgehammer. But Coley now unleashing uppercuts. See, he's deceiving. Coley gets those little shots in and makes you miss, and he comes right back with two or three more. There have been no knockdowns. Coley came close. A few rounds ago, with five seconds to go, he was really wobbled. with those uppercuts. Missed every one of those. Missed every one of those. It looked good, but he didn't land. Well, I'll tell you what, he's trying. He's putting the punches together. The key for right now for Carr is to put them together because that's what Coley's been doing. Closing seconds of round 11. Nice flurry there by Daryl Coley. Downstairs and up. As the bell sounds, Listen, listen, if you put them shots together, you can win this fight. Don't let it come out and get no combination off, all right? You start punching when the jab, when the bell start, and you punch when the bell end, you understand? And you don't want the fight, okay? If he flare, you got to flare it back, baby. You got to dig down. We touch gloves when we come out. You understand? You win this round big, you got to fight, okay? You got to win it big, though. It's close, it's just that close, look. Throw a lot of punches over I want you to dog this one. No, no, Give us what we asked for, Daryl. Box him, okay? What's that, man? Box him. Box him. Quick hands and move. That's what we want, man. Right. Daryl, I'm, I'm Don't sit there stuck at no Come time. As right. soon as he tries to lay on you, pivot out. Right Don't let him lay on you. No move. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Three minutes, man. Three minutes. Let's go. Let's go. We come to Let's the go. conclusion Keep of a clean. terrific fight. Round 12. And Carr looking to end it there with that right hand. And he needs to because this is a big round for him. He either knocks him out or has a huge round. I don't think even a huge round can't win it on my scorecard, but he's got to do something big. Our yeah. fans here in Vegas predicting that this would be a great fight. They were right, and it's a shame that it had to be overshadowed by Mike Tyson one week from tonight. I'll tell you what, if he wins the round really big, he'll have a draw on my scorecard. But right now, exactly what Overcar's corner said. He's getting off a combination. You gotta, you gotta answer those combinations. You can't let him get off and move. I hate to have to score this one. Coley looking to set up that right hand with the left jab. There it is again. But Carr able to ward it off. Overcar's not putting on enough pressure. He needs to close the show here because I have him behind ever so slightly, but behind. Coley doing what he should be. Boxing and being careful. I've got Coley much further ahead. I don't think that even winning the round can uh, Overcar win, but if you got a 10-8 round, and uh, there's possibilities. Coley was rocked with five seconds left in the eighth round. That is the closest. We have come to a knockdown. We are halfway through the 12th and final round for the NABF Waterway Championship. Work out, work out. It was early, I think, in the second round where Obakar got rocked a little bit, but we've never seen it again. Both fighters have to be exhausted. But neither has taken much time off in this fight. Coming up to one minute remaining. It has been virtually non-stop from the opening bell. And Darrell Coley is finishing off like he started, dancing, outboxing, outthinking, and taking the fight away from Overcar. And Carr missing. Coley raises his arm in triumph. The crowd doesn't like it. People don't like ring generals. <laughs> they like guys that dig in and fight. They don't want to be showboating. They want Tyson. Unless you're Muhammad Ali. Oh, yeah, well, but he boxed an awful lot, and he fought when he had to. He had guts of an elephant. There are always exceptions. Left hook there by Coley that landed, followed by a right. Then another right by Darrell Coley. Coley See, this finishing is where, strong. This is where Coley's so affected. He gets two or three off, he makes Carr miss, and he lands two or three more, and now he's gone. Coley having a big 12th round, which could turn it in his favor. Anything is 
possible in Las Vegas, but I think he's won this fight. Looking to defend his NABF welterweight title for the third time, here's your bell. Ring generalship has won that uh, contest as far as I'm concerned, but the judges have a completely different picture. Bobby, how'd you end up? I wound up with this fight. Derek Cole, he's a winner, clearly. I think he wins the fight. Over. Well, if he does, he remains undefeated. And he remains the NABF welterweight champion. That's right, baby. We got you. Meanwhile, Oba Carr looking to take the title away in hopes that his future hopes of getting another world title shot are not derailed. So the Motor City Obacar out of Detroit, Michigan, hopes that the judges see it his way. Dwayne Ford and Chuck Jumpa of Las Vegas and Dickie Cole of Dallas, Texas. Interested spectator right there is Mike Tyson, who is a very close personal friend of Obacar. Talking there with uh, his manager, John Horn, and promoter, Don King. So what's it going to be? You're the champ. All right, baby. You're the champ. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Or Daryl Coley. You're the champ. You're the champ. Daryl Coley out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. Come on. Come on. Come on. Back up, man. Come on. Disciple of Sugar Ray Leonard. Obakar, disciple of the famous front gym in Detroit, Michigan. Coley, I thought, fought a tremendous fight here against the rough and tough Obakar. Daryl Coley looking to go to 28-0 and 2. And he said he was looking for this to go to a, a shutout rather than a knockout, and I'm not so sure he got the shutout, but he may have gotten the decision. So, looks like Jimmy Lennon Jr., our ring announcer, is set for the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand Garden, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Chuck Jampa scores about 116, 114 in favor of Daryl Coley. Judge at ringside, Dwayne Ford scores about 115, 113 in favor of Oba Carr. All right. Judge at ringside, Dickie Cole scores about 115 to 114 in favor of the winner and new NABF champion, Oba. Celebration as the new NABF welterweight champion. You my man. A split decision. One judge had it 115, 114 for Carr. The other 115, 113 for Carr. And another judge 116, 114 Coley. A disappointed Daryl Coley. So Oba Carr takes the title away from Daryl Coley who had successfully defended the title twice before Carr on course for another shot, perhaps at a world title, having the experience of fighting, although losing to Felix Trinidad, some very formidable names currently operating at champions. Aside from Trinidad, Pernell Whitaker, Ike Corte, but Carr wins his first title. The NABF welterweight championship, lifting his record to 36 and one in the process. Daryl Coley suffers his first defeat, now 27-1. And two. Step, step right next. So coming up next here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, our main event, the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship, as Vincent Petque defends his title against Paul Baden. We are now set for post-fight interviews from our first bout. It was an exciting one. Let's go up to the fight doctor, Freddy Pacheco in the ring. Very exciting fight. I must tell you right off the top, both Bobby Chez and I had this guy winning by a point, but this was so close you couldn't argue about this thing one way or another. However, that's got to be one of your toughest fights, Obergard. Yeah, I think it was one of my toughest fights. Uh, I tried to press the issue the whole night. Uh, a lot of things I did, I was kind of surprised.